Okay, guys. Well, uh, while I was editing, I ran into uh, some uh, technical difficulties here, so I'm going to have to go back and reshoot this portion of uh, our rescue here. And uh, where I was at was uh, I'd gotten to the point that uh, we'd pretty much solved all of our issues uh, that we were having with the frame, except for this loose extractor here and uh, what uh, we found with that was that it's loose so uh, what I'm gonna do to kinda try to recreate uh, the portion of the video that uh, I had to cut out was uh, if you can see there's a small pin right here in the rail that's a 1 16th inch pin and I can just uh, probably push it out of here with a paper clip because again it wasn't pinned in place uh, it's just a typical uh, 1 16th inch roll pin and that's what holds the ejector in place and as you can see here what they've done is they've cut a groove in it to allow that pin a place to slide through and that's typically what holds it in place but I don't know if you can see the detail in it what's happened is, is they've started up here and probably using a Dremel tool as their cut went in it slipped down a little bit and what that did was instead of that being a 1 16th inch wide uh, cut in the pin what's happened is, is they've made it pretty close to a 32nd of an inch and what that's allowing is that's allowing the ejector to move up and down uh, I have gone ahead and ordered another one of these and uh, I'll uh, when I get it I'll uh, go ahead and make a separate video on how to exchange that uh, ejector but uh, anyway uh, <clears throat> what I did uh, in the video and what's missing is is, is me showing you this uh, I will go ahead and reinstall it we did uh, take this thing to the range and test fire it the other day with this loose extractor in there and while it did work um, I did have some slight issues uh, that were ejection related and uh, whether or not this loose ex uh, ejector was the cause of that or not I don't know. Um, the other thing I did uh, in the original version of the video was uh, I began putting the frame back together. Um, I did go ahead and bevel the center leaf on the uh, sear spring uh, just like I did in the uh, 2011 uh, video. Um, and as I cut it back together it occurred to me that I had not peened this uh, plunger tube back in place so where this will take up uh, as soon as we're done here is uh, we'll be out in the shop and we'll go ahead and uh, peen this uh, plunger tube into place and uh, show you how that's done so anyway um, like I say uh, I wanted this to be the the uh, like I say the original version of it for whatever reason it just absolutely was not in focus whatsoever and it was very difficult to see so I wanted to uh, readdress this and uh, show you guys where I was at uh, and what we did and this is all we did in that portion that'll uh, I'll just uh, edit it out and replace it with this so anyway um, that's where we're at uh, at this point I'll go ahead and slip this in and uh, We'll uh, continue editing and uh, let you see how things are going. So I'll uh, leave you out in the shop. Okay, guys, so you always uh, wondered what I uh, do with the uh, excess leather that's left over from my uh, Colster holsters. Now you know. Use it on the device. And what we're going to have to do here those uh, peen that plunger tube in here is just wrap uh, both of those holes once or twice to uh, get it to fit as tightly as we can it in there it'll hold it but uh, it's not quite as tight as it probably could be so what we'll do is we'll uh, go ahead and stick this back in the vise 
tighten that down, make sure it's as good and tight as we can get it in there. See how that does. Now, as you know, yeah, see, and that's good in there, good and tight now. Uh, as you know, um, I'm not a big fan of spending a lot of excess money. Uh, they do make a special tool to uh, put that in place, but uh, as you can see, I did just fine with a punch. So uh, I get that plunger tube back into place. Okay, now uh, to remove this rear sight. To remove this rear sight, we're just simply going to take a punch and uh, our big hammer again. And drift that sight out like so. Now our new sights and if we're lucky we'll just fit back into place. Usually I'm not that lucky. Now I have to have this file that is set to the proper angle of the dovetail. Gonna clean that dovetail out a little bit. And we'll see if we can get our sight to go in. Once we get it started, Shouldn't be too difficult to get it to drift over. The biggest issue is usually just getting it started and not getting carried away. A lot of times these sights are made out of material that is much softer than the slide itself so if the fit is too tight what you end up with is a site that's all banged up got big gouges and stuff in it so we'll take our time see if we can get our sight to drift over without too much effort. That seems to be doing well, however, uh, it's looking like my vice could use a little torquing down. Improved torque down device. We're making a little better headway. Like I say, this is just a matter of relieve it a little bit. Try to fit it and relieve it a little bit more because you want that to be very firm fit. I 
game cameras and everything else falling down. We're making things shake, rattle, and roll around here. Alright, well, we're getting there. Still just a little tighter than we want it. But that's okay. more snug and precise we are, the better the sight will fit. And the less I have to worry about it coming undone. This vice is going to drive me nuts though if the thing does not quit coming loose. Yeah, we're getting there. Think about one more pass with the file and we'll have it. The important thing when you're doing this is to keep that file as flat as possible and as straight as possible. Oh, we're so close. So close. Then about a 32nd of an inch of being perfectly center. That's got it. This particular slide has a reference line for center and the site has a reference line for center on it. So we're in good shape there. You need to look at it and you'll see probably see a few shiny spots. Uh, that'll be taken out with some cold blue. Now the front site. 
this is the front sight here. Now, what happens is, is this little tenon goes into this little groove and fits down in there. For a good snug fit, you just start it by hand. And then we come back with our leather products, kind of protect everything. Obviously we want to save as much finish as possible. Like I say, sometimes this can be a bit tricky to get everything lined up just right. happening is the side is wanting to rock forward a little bit. I'm trying to avoid that and have it go in square. Part of that is because of the leather. Just about got it. Now we've gotten that in there. And what you can see right here is the bottom of that tenon sticking out through the hole, which is exactly what we want. Just looking to make sure that I can't see any daylight underneath it. And conversely, the other thing we don't want to do is smash the sight. Yeah. Looks like we got a pretty good purchase on it. Now, as with the front sight here, and pinning it in place, the plunger tube also with pinning it in place also. Uh, both of those you don't want any play in them and you want them uh, pinned up as tightly as possible. But those are both parts that occasionally will work their way loose. And you can use these same procedures if you get one that comes loose on you. And a lot of times, we'll be able to save that part. All right. Well, we've got a good peen. You can see where the uh, tenon is flattened out right there. And that's what we want. Now, what we'll do with our Dremel once we get back inside is we'll go ahead and smooth that out because that does have to be absolutely smooth for our uh, bushing to fit in there properly. But you can see that we've got that site installed and we've got the rear installed. We'll just have to uh, touch that up with some cold blue.